Let's take a look at an aquarium sterilizing lamp, although it will have other uses as well. This claims to be a UVC lamp used for sterilizing the water in aquariums, but it's really important to note you don't put it in the area with the fish in it because it will damage the fish. You put it in the separate filter section. So inside the box is the power supply, which is probably going to be very simple. Spoilers. I know it's very simple because during a recent live stream, I uh, tested it on the Hoppy style tester. This is the anti style tester, complete with its fun button. Let's plug it in and show it working. Good packing. It survived. So I shall plug this in here. Turn it on. And at this point in time, uh, I should mention that you cannot look directly at UVC lamps without eye protection. I do have eye protection at the moment, but this thing is theoretically putting out UVC. We can test that. One moment, please. And the UVC test card says, yes, it's making the phosphor on the UVC section glow. So it is putting UVC out. There is another test that is absolutely not recommended. Sniff the hand, place the hand over the light for a while, then sniff your hand. Yes, it smells like burnt organic material. Okay. Right, tell you what, let's get the meter in here. And it says the power is three watts, which is correct for that style of lamp. I'm shielding my eyes doubly from this. Uh, current is 351 milliamps, which is correct as well. The power factor is terrible at 0 0.035, meaning they're using a capacitor to drop the power to this. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Watch your eyes. The light is coming back. So this unit is using the guts of a UVC lamp called a GTL3. And these lamps are very interesting because they have a filament in them coated with a thermally emissive compound. And they've got mercury vapour in them. And initially when you turn them on, current flows through, it heats the heating element up, the filament, and that gets the mercury vapour into the vapour form and then it starts forming the discharge. So initially when you turn these on they'll glow orange and then they go blue and there's a bit of instability and then they'll sort of light up. The instructions are very interesting. Oh, it's also worth mentioning, these don't use standard glass. These use UVL glass, which could be quartz, which is a UVL glass, and it has to be a specific glass to actually emit the, well, to pass the correct wavelengths, which in this case is 254 nanometer. This one is a O3, an ozone generating one, which means the glass also passes the 184 nanometer wavelength, which creates ozone. These things used to be used in commercial laundry equipment to actually keep the, the air sterile and freshen your clothing up. It comes with a little test certificate thing that has been stamped. Someone in the factory just stamps those things all day. The instructions say, uh, noting... Megabit 110 volt should not be used in domestic 220 volt voltage, resulting in we are not responsible for any damage or other loss of the products. It also says, um, it claims the 10,000 hours. I'm not sure about that. Now, another thing about the UVO glass is that over time, the UVC actually changes the state of the glass and its output can vary. This is where it would have been interesting having that lovely UVC spectrometer that Naomi Wu sent me for a loan to test the uh, start the 222 nanometer um, Exheimer lamp system, but I had to send that back to Naomi. Very, very expensive piece of equipment costing thousands of pounds and very niche use. It'd be nice if they did, I'd actually buy one if it did from UVC all the way up to the infrared spectrum, that would be great. They probably do one like that. Um, it also says here, where is it, where is it? There's a bit about, uh, hold on, let me, let, oh, here it is. When household life uses germicidal lamp, because you can use this for sterilizing spaces as well, but not while you're in it. If you look at these lamps, while they're lit without eye protection, it will cause photokeratitis, which is, uh, did I pronounce that correctly? Which means that you'll wake up in the middle of the night feeling like sand has been thrown in your eyes. Good news, it passes, but it's really unpleasant it happens. I have had that while experimenting with UVC lights. Just at a low level, fortunately it was gone by the morning. If With longer exposures, it'll be a lot longer. We're going to take this apart, by the way. And the power supply. We're going to take the whole lot apart. But it says, When household life uses germicidal lamp, please leave irradiate area after light, same space. 
Shine, the shooting position is suggested to move more. The effect is better. Please ventilate the space after sterilization in order to disperse bacteria. The virus kills the smell of death. Excellent. It's the smell of death. It's a very distinctive organic smell, like when you set fire to your beard, but I'm not allowed to do that on YouTube. Let's peel this label off. If I can peel the label off, I'll zoom down this so you can see. And that should reveal that it's just wire straight onto the the bulb without the base. So I'm just trying to get this off. It's very sticky and breaky. This is also showing that the waterproofing looks like just a rubber bung. Is it glued? There it is. They crimped it onto the end of the lamp. That's interesting. Is this rubber bung going to come out? Am I going to break it? It's very tight. The The wire is sliding inside the rubber bung. What would happen if I got a screwdriver and carefully slipped down there? Would it break the tube? Break the outer glass? It is, it's just purely a seal like this. That is very tight. This is good in a way. If I pull this, is it going to pull it? No, it's just pulling the wire. I shall try and get that out later on. Let's open the box, which is most likely just a switch and a capacitor, although they do timed versions. I'll zoom out just a little bit for this because it is a bit bigger. Is this going to be glued together? Or am I going to be able to spudgerize it? I'm going to be able to spudgerize it. It's clipped together. Creaky, creaky, creaky. Big capacitor, hopefully a discharge resistor. Two capacitors. No discharge. Oh, there's a discharge resistor. Righty ho. Oh, a couple of resistors. What's that about? Is there an inrush limiting resistor as well? I think there is. There is a sort of inrush, maybe a fusible resistor as well. Right, tell you what, I shall draw you the schematic for this, and I'll also try and get this out for, for no good reason at all. It's just basically a rubber bung stuck into a tube, but I shall try that. One moment, please. Reverse engineering did not take long. Let's zoom down a bit. I've taken the bulb out of its outer UVO glass tube and I ran it for a while. There was no smell of ozone. So this is a non-ozone producing one that is filtering the 184 nanometer wavelength out, only 254 nanometers coming out the bulb and through the tube. It's worth mentioning that the UVO glass tube that this is pushed into with this tight-fitting rubber bung. You can see it's sealed all the way around, which is good. Um, but it's worth mentioning, if you handle these, it's worth cleaning with an alcohol swab, like an isopropyl alcohol swab, because otherwise, greasy fingerprints can affect the transmission of the ultraviolet. They can effectively block it. So taking a look at the schematic, the little inrush resistor is not an inrush resistor, it is a fuse. And the colours on it are orange, black, red, red. Not sure which order they're supposed to be read in. Maybe 22 milliamps or something? I'm not really sure. Oh, it won't be 22 milliamps because it runs at 350 milliamps. So not sure about this. Anyway, there is a fuse in line. And then there is the capacitive dropper. Very, very simple. It's just two very high value, 2.2 megafarad capacitors in parallel with a discharge resistor, 470 K, a nicely rated one. It's not just the smallest resistor they could put in. It seems to be rated for the job. And it's worth mentioning that discharge resistor is good because otherwise, if you unplugged it and then you touched the pins, you could get quite a snap off that. You could pass quite a bit of current if that held a charge. But there is the mercury discharge tube with its filament and the emissive coating and then the mercury vapour inside and a little sort of getter plate as well, which actually the getter plate might not just be a getter plate as such. It might be an amalgam holding the mercury so that it releases once it's heated up by this filament. Very in interesting lamp. Because it's using capacitor to drop quite a lot of current, although the real power is 3 watts, the effectively, because it's out of phase, the apparent power is 85 watts, which if your metering company sets your meter to measure apparent power, it would make this quite a high power load. Um, there are other ways of driving these tubes. You get low voltage drivers that have a Royer oscillator in them, and it drives it with low voltage, current limited AC and that uh, would be a way around that. But it, most meters at the moment, depending where you are, some states in America have started charging for apparent power. 
But uh, most meters will just charge the real power, so it's not that relevant really so much. I'm also not sure how it affects the lifespan of the lamp having capacitors in series, because technically speaking it strikes in each half, but I don't see these tubes. I've tried some for a while and they've not blackened, so maybe that's a sign that it is a perfectly valid way of driving them. But there we have it. Uh, it also came with a little clip for clipping it onto the side of your fish tank with a little rubber rubber pad here, which also doubles up as this other side of the rubber suction cup. So remember, don't expose pets, plants, or your humans to the output of this tube because it is very destructive. It will cause skin irritation in the surface. And contrary to what people say, it causes cancer because they see it causing the skin irritation. In reality, experiments and tests have shown that the very short wavelength ultraviolet, although it's very irritating to skin and eyes, doesn't actually penetrate deep enough through the skin layers into the critical area where it can actually break the DNA up and cause problems like UVB and strong, strong UVA. But that's it. It's not a bad implementation. It works. It passes the UV. And if you have an application where you need to sterilize a body of water, say a rainwater tank or something, it might actually work in that, but not where there was a high throughput of water. It would have to be a sort of continuous thing. But there we have it. Uh, it's an interesting little UVC source. I'll leave a, a link to where I got it. It was AliExpress. Uh, and it wasn't that expensive because it's just a common item. Um, and uh, I'll leave that in the description, along with any other notes that are worthy of mention. But very neat. Actually pretty good construction.